good day and welcome to today's episode uh, of the series on cryptocurrencies. We're going to be speaking about money, Bitcoin and Libra. In order to understand how it works and the differences between Libra and Bitcoin, it is necessary to analyze the history of money first, its functions and how money evolves in society. The simplest way to exchange value is known as the barter system, a process of direct exchange or peer-to-peer -peer system where valuable goods are exchanged directly with one another. What happens when the market grows? Unfortunately, the larger the market, the bigger the problem of so-called coincidence of wants. There are three distinct dimensions to this problem. First, the lack of coincidence in scales. It answers the questions, is the good divisible in smaller units? Second, the lack of coincidence in time frames. It answers the question, does it hold its value into the future? And number three, the lack of coincidence of locations. It answers the question, is it easy to transport or move around? The only way around these problems is a form of indirect exchange, or in other words, the use of an intermediary good as a medium of exchange. This is the first function of money a medium of exchange. The property that leads to a, a good being adopted freely as money on the market is liquidity. In other words, the ease with which a good can be sold on the market whenever its holder desires with the least loss in its price. The relative liquidity of any good can be assessed in terms of how well they address the three facets of the problem of lack of coincidence of wants. Their liquidity across scales, time and space. The liquidity across time is the most crucial one as it represents the important function of money. In other words, the function as a store of value. This refers to the ability to hold value into the future. In order for a good to maintain its value in the future, it is necessary that its supply not increase too drastically. The relative difficulty of producing new monetary units determines the hardness of money. Goods, which are the hardest and the costliest to produce, will or could, at the limit, always be used as money. This is one of the reasons why silver and gold have been so long stores of value, only later to be abandoned as money standards. Another important aspect of the liquidity of a monetary medium is its acceptability by others. A wide acceptance of a medium of exchange allows all prices to be exp expressed in its terms. In other words, it can be used as a unit of account, which is the third function of money. Only with a uniform medium of exchange acting as a unit of account does the complex economic calculation become possible. And with it, the possibility for specialization, complex tasks, capital accumulation, and larger markets. Now let us turn to uh, cryptocurrencies and in particular to Bitcoin. One might suggest that Bitcoin serves all functions of money. Number one, as a medium of exchange. Number two, as a unit of account. And number three, as a store of value. This last point is an important one. Does Bitcoin really hold its value into the future? If we look at the fundamentals, one could argue that it does. As it has a limited supply of 21 million units, it cannot be inflated, and therefore its value should not decrease because of rising supply beyond a fixed hard limit. On this basis, Bitcoin could therefore be considered as a hard or sound money, which could have large implications for economies globally, if successful. Now, let us look at the differences between, on the one side, Bitcoin and the other side, Libra. So number one, and we saw it in the first uh, episode, Bitcoin is a, and I quote, pure peer-to-peer -peer version of an electronic cash that allows online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. It seeks to create a payment system without trusted intermediaries and is also based on economic scarcity. Transactions recorded on a censorship-resistant ledger that anyone can access. The Bitcoin ledger is public and permissionless. Libra, on the one side, or Libra's blockchain goal, is to serve as a solid foundation for financial services, including a new global currency, which could meet the daily financial needs of billions of people. It is all about scale and access, and it is money based on trust in an issuer. Libra is an experiment in monetary systems for the digital age and has been compared to popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and other, even though many questions whether it can really, really look at as a cryptocurrency. Transactions are recorded on a ledger that anyone will be able to access and view in the future. 
but for the time being, only an authorized set of corporations will be able to amend. In other words, the ledger is public and permissioned, as opposed to Bitcoin, which is public and permissionless. Other than the fact that they both come with a white paper and are referred to as cryptocurrencies, Libra and Bitcoin are actually very different. Here's a rundown of the key differences between the two. Let's start with the different use cases. Bitcoin's white paper describes the virtual currency as a peer-to-peer -peer payment system, allowing people to exchange money without going through a bank. It's commonly used today as a form of investment. Libra's primary purpose is to be used in cross-border payments and money transfers. The currency is tied to a basket of government-backed currencies and other assets to avoid the volatile swings often seen in cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Referred to by many in the industry as a stablecoin, Libra is aimed at maintaining a stable value and work more like a traditional currency than like a cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, as we said, is permissionless, fully decentralized and deflationary and volatile. Libra is permissioned, more centralized, governed by supply and demand, and pegged to fiat currencies. And what is meant by governed by supply and demand is that Facebook, or better, the Libra Foundation, and its partners' companies could adjust the supply to match the quantity of other assets held in reserve, effectively maintaining a stable price even when demand changes. Bitcoin, on the other hand, as a fixed supply. The total number of Bitcoins, as we said, that will ever be minted is hard capped at 21 million, which in turn means that Bitcoin supply is fixed and cannot react to market's demand. Libra on the other side can be created or burned when one of Libra's authorized resellers deposits or withdraws money from its reserve. Now, let's look at the second set of differences. Regulatory questions. Facebook currency has taken the spotlight when it comes to talk of regulating cryptocurrencies, but some worry the company's blockchain project could be lumped in with other digital assets by regulators. That would be problematic, given the difference between Libra and a digital currency like Bitcoin. Whereas Bitcoin rules out the need for financial intermediaries, Libra's model is resilient and reliant on the entities which form the Libra Association. In the case of Bitcoin, a system without intermediaries is a system without intermediary risk, and thus no need for regulation aimed at safeguarding against the types of risk presented by intermediaries. So Bitcoin's network involves so-called miners who record transactions. It wouldn't make sense to regulate them, as they are trusted custodians of user funds. Cryptocurrencies exchanges and wallets, on the other hand, do require regulation. In the case of Libra, questions around how Libra would fit into existing financial regulations or whether Libra could be considered as a financial security were raised. If Facebook and its partners do manage to overcome the regulatory hurdles, the currency will definitely have an enormous impact on the global economy, possibly eclipsing that of Bitcoin and some say of fiat currencies, and start convincing people that there are other ways of storing value than using fiat currencies like the US dollar. Thank you for watching. My name is Francesco De Liberti and I'm the CEO of the Swiss Crypto Exchange.